Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope your day is going fantastic. Thanks for joining me. Today we are going to create three cards with the Hero Arts My Monthly Hero Kit for June 2020. This kit did sell out guys, so this video is more for inspiration, but um, we're going to take a look at what's in the kit and then we're going to make three projects. Now I was super excited about this kit because I completely saw masculine cards with it so today's projects are going to be kind of on the masculine side although they could be kind of universal but um let's take a look you get a four by six stamp set um and then you also get um lots of dies you get 10 coordinating frame cuts and then three of uh the fancy scene building dies which are really nice i like to separate all of my dies and make sure that um, all of my images in the stamp set have a die and they do every single image in your 4x6 stamp set here does have a coordinating die even those little stars do um, which are attached to the top of your mountainside and I was gonna leave them on there because they're so little I didn't want to lose them but I ended up separating them <laughs> but um so your frame cuts include a um, like a pine tree in a cabin background you get a mountain background and then you get a lighthouse so you can mix and match and layer them for your backgrounds, which is really nice. Okay, we're going to take a look at our next goodie bag. And in this bag, um, there is so much in this kit this month. You get a glow-in-the-dark lacquer pen. Super neat. We're going to use this on our projects today. And then you also get a bag of iridescent. Um, they're not quite stars. I would call them um, little X. They're like pluses almost. Plus, um, at the very end, I show a real close-up picture. You can see what they look like there. But they're real pretty um, iridescent. This month's kit, is you get a Northern Lights 6x6 background stamp. So pretty, guys. And then you get some handmade watercolor cardstock. You get, well, your website will say you get two sheets. I actually have extra. I have four. Um, but I'm only going to use enough for two sheets in case um everybody got four that's a good thing but if, 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 if everybody just got two i wanted to just use enough product for two <laughs> but this is really neat it tears beautifully and it's super thick um at first i thought it was uh um felt but it, it's super thick quality handmade black watercolor card stock okay and they're half sheets they're five and a half by eight and a half Let's do some stamping. Now I have the little Hero Hues, the mini ink cubes, and I think they would be too small to cover my background. So I'm gonna bring in my own inks and we're gonna start off with a yellow color. I wanted to do kind of non-traditional Northern Light colors. And so I thought um, yellows, blues mixed together would create a green. So we're gonna go with kind of a, a very cool background. Um, the ink that I'm using is called Haystack. And we're going to ink up our background here and stamp this once. And you can see how pretty this is. This was so much fun. I think heat embossing would be fabulous. I didn't do that today, but I think it'd be fabulous. Next, I'm taking like a teal colored ink. This is Beach Breeze. And I'm going to go over the bottom horizon line with that. It's going to create a green color. And then I'm also going to take that same Beach Breeze ink and kind of drag it up along the trail of the Northern Light. We're just kind of highlighting this. And I think that look, you can kind of see how this is going. So pretty. Next, I'm going to take a real darker ink. It's called Chambray Shirt. It's a darker blue. And I'm going to drag my ink pad going up and kind of fill in just with the edge of my ink pad the area around the trail of the normal northern light. So we kind of have a different color effect. And I'm kind of skipping some areas because you can do that with the, the straight lines on here. We're going to press down really good. And I love the way this turned out. I think it's so neat. So you have yellows and greens and teals and blues. So pretty. That's, a, that's my background. Okay, we're going to go ahead and set our Misty aside and then we're going to do some die cutting. I'm going to take some of our watercolor cardstock and we're going to die cut out our lighthouse piece, creating a silhouette. And, and the handmade paper guys die cuts beautifully. Um, I only had to run it through once and it die cut beautifully. Okay, I think we're going to take some of um, 
some cardstock from my stash. The color that I'm using here is called Fresh Sage, and I'm gonna die cut out the mountains with that color. I'm gonna trim off the left and right because the open, uh, the die is an open end die. And basically we're gonna put the mountains on the horizon line, and then we'll put our lighthouse right in front. We're gonna trim down our paper so I have a little bit of a border on my card base. I'm gonna end up trimming a half of an inch off the right here and then a half of an inch off the top. And my panel size was four and a quarter by five and a half. So basically we're gonna have a quarter inch around our card base. Now next, I want to add a little icy snow top to the mountains. And so I'm gonna use my glow in the dark lacquer pen and I'm gonna go over just the edge of my mountain top here and um, I'm going to use my uh, lacquer pen as glue. So it works great. It's thick enough too. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some white cardstock, a scratch piece here, and I'm going to bring in some Distress Mica Flakes. They're like ice kind of crystals, and I think they would look really nice on the mountaintop, keeping it subtle. Um, for my background, I'm going to use those stars. So I wanted something that was just kind of subtle. And I think the mica flakes are going to work good, kind of looking like um, ice crystals here. Okay, we're going to set this aside and adhere this to our horizon line. The excess that's overhanging, I'm going to trim off. And I just use my glue to secure it. Lovely. Okay, next I'm going to bring in that same scratch piece of paper. And I'm going to use my glow-in-the-dark lacquer pen. And going in up and down motions, the same um, the same way that the the northern light string is, I'm going to go around the trail here with that glow in the dark lacquer pen. I'm just adding some of this, and then what we're going to do is grab our little iridescent stars, and then we're, well, they're not really stars; they're like pluses, guys. But we're going to add these to our little northern light trail. And I added a few dots too on my mountain top so some of those stars will stick down to the bottom. But I think these are so pretty. Now I'm calling this these cards masculine and I think I can get away with it because it's, it's northern lights and it's not sparkle, although it is sparkle. <laughs> but I think it looks so, so neat. Love the way this turned out. Okay, I'm gonna do a little smushing on that top corner and add a little bit more. These lay flat too, which are really nice. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the sentiment while we have our panel flat. The sentiment for this card, um, I think it goes perfect with the Northern Lights. It says, or actually it goes perfect with the um, lighthouse. It says, um, you are a beacon of light. I thought that was so pretty and you know what? When I stamped it, it killed me because I got my sentiment crooked. Um, so this is my fix for a crooked sentiment. I have a little wiggle room on my panel because it's so large. So I'm putting it, in my, putting it in my paper trimmer and lining it up on the left and right and trimming off um, the top and bottom, kind of re-squaring it. So the pieces that I'm actually trimming off or like um, at a diagonal. You can see here once I remove my paper trimmer. So it ends up making my square panel square again. So that was kind of an easy fix. Okay, we're gonna flip over our panel and our lighthouse. I'm gonna add foam adhesive and here both of these um, together and then we're gonna add it to our standard A2 size card base. And I just think that looks so pretty pretty simple card but I think just the details in here are pretty. Okay now we're gonna work on card number two. We're bringing back the Misty and our Northern Lights background stamp. We're gonna basically do the same thing but this time we're just gonna use two colors. I'm gonna place my cardstock directly on my background stamp and then kind of do a reverse fold of my Misty. Um, I had it ease of, on the back of my um, cardstock so it's gonna stick to my um, the bottom of my misty and this is just easier for me to line it up but first we're going to ink up with a darker blue ink it's the chambray shirt ink we'll stamp this going over that really good and then I'm going to bring in my um, my yellow ink we're going to do a reverse before I started with the yellow ink first now we're going to do opposite and then I'm just kind of lightly tapping it and going over it and this was really easy to create 
this background, which I thought was so neat. You don't have to do much to get that effect. I just love this. Okay, I'm bringing in my, pa my paper trimmer and I wanna just cut off the horizon line that's in my background. We're gonna use the top piece here. Um, the horizon line we'll use for our last card, but the top piece we're gonna end up using for our card today. Now, I thought it'd be fun to create like little photo frames. So um, I want images for the inside of my photo frame. So I'm gonna take the little bird or the eagle that's in the stamp set. And then also I'm gonna take the sailboat. I'm gonna stamp both of these with my Versamark ink, or actually my Versafine Onyx black ink. Um, this way I get a nice crisp black image. Grab my ink pad here and we'll just ink it up and stamp our the silhouette of our sailboat. And then I'll take our little bird and do the same thing. Now I'm bringing in a small die for my stash that creates a photo frame. But if you have a small rectangle and a square, put those together and you can create the same uh, photo frame um, to the scale that you'd like. I just wanted some small ones, kind of creating like a, um, a couple pictures for my background. I'm gonna tape these down, at least the coordinating dies down, and then we're gonna run this through the die cut machine. And then um, they are good to go. Now, um, this is my little photo frame. I'm gonna die cut out two of these. And then once these are die cut out, I thought about using um, the inside piece um, as a guide for my um, the background of my photo frame. But I changed my mind. I'm gonna use the photo frame as a guide. This way I can add glue behind my background panel. It's just gonna make it easier. We're gonna trim off two pieces. They'll fit perfectly behind here. And then using my glue, I'm gonna go ahead and flip over my photo frames and add, um, add some to the edge here. And then we have a real pretty Northern Light background. And I'm gonna do this to both frames. Next, I'm gonna take my little sailboat and we're actually, while the glue's still wet, I'm gonna tuck my sailboat in. And I think that makes the perfect little picture here. I have some excess overhanging, so I'm going to use my scissors and just trim that off. And I'm going to do the same exact thing with the little bird or the eagle, adding the background and then um, popping up my little bird. So they're good to go. I'm actually going to add a little dimension to this little sailboat by putting a foam square behind it so it pops up a little bit. And then we're going to, originally I had my little bird stuck down but I thought, let's add some dimension to this too. Okay, I wanted to crisscross these um, on my panel, so I'm just keep leaving a little extra room there in that corner. Okay, now these are done. Now I'm gonna bring in some more of that fresh sage uh, cardstock, and then also I'm gonna die cut out my um, pine tree and my cabin background here. And again, this die cuts beautifully. For this card, we're gonna make a landscape style card. So I'm gonna take this piece of colored card stock and I'm gonna trim it down at two and a half inches. So it's two and a half inches by five and a half inches. And then we're gonna basically cover the seam of this with our, um, our background piece here that we cut out with the handmade card stock. And I have a little piece in the back I'm gonna move it all the way to the right because I wanna put the photo frames to the left. So I went ahead and adhered my green cardstock directly to my A2 size card base. And then we're gonna go ahead and glue down our background. Now it is um, thick, so you have a little dimension with that, which is really nice. Okay, now I'm gonna kind of place my, my pictures, kind of crisscrossing them again. And then we are gonna take our sentiment for this card. I thought we would use the let your dream set sail. It goes perfect with the bird and I think it goes perfect with the sailboat. And I wasn't sure whether I should use white embossing powder, but I think I'm gonna go with a darker color. I'm gonna use my VersaFine Onyx Black ink to stamp the sentiment. I just think it makes it more masculine. But I'm gonna stamp that in the bottom right corner. Love this. And then I'm gonna flip over my uh, picture frames, add foam adhesive behind here, and then place them back on the card base. Um, I decided to add a little bit of those um, little stars on the inside of my picture frame 
This way we have a little bit of um, sparkle in that northern light background. And then I did take the little plus image in the stamp set and stamp that with my black ink too. You can see I put two in the bottom right or uh, bottom left corner and then just one above the trees here. And then that finishes off card number two. And like I said, it's pretty masculine. Um, now for card number three, I'm bringing in my rounded rectangle dies here and we're going to cut out a panel and then we're going to cut out a circle in that panel. And then I'm going to take one size larger circle die and um, I just wanted a real thin frame and I'm going to die cut out a frame with the black um, handmade uh, paper. Okay, I thought we would create a background using that same fresh sage uh, cart, colored cardstock and then um, we can mat our panel on it. Now I wanted a white background we're going to make a shaker card for this card. So I wanted a white background behind my window here. So I'm lining up my white panel um, where I want it on my fresh sage panel. And then this way I can adhere my circle. I thought we'd add a little bit of color, but you could skip this step guys, because I fully loaded my, um, my shaker and you really can't see the background, but I'm using my speckled egg distress ink just to do a little shading behind here. Now normally I put one layer of foam adhesive, um, I doubled it up and um, I still loaded it up. I love those little star stars, so I loaded it up and it didn't really shake much, but that's why I say you could skip the step. Now I went ahead and adhered my background piece a little bit below the halfway mark on my circle here. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment before we finish off our shaker. For this card, I chose... Um, the long sentiment that says you are wonderful and I'm just stamping it right below my window leaving a little bit of room for my my um, my frame that's gonna, we're gonna put around a window now the image I want to add is the whale that's in the stamp set I want to stamp this with my VersaFine ink VersaFine is a sticky ink so and it stays wet um, so I'm gonna use my heat gun and dry it and then we're gonna take the coordinating die and just die cut out this whale now once this is ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and grab my window front here and just add a little bit of glue right below my whale and then um, tack him um, on our ocean bottom here. Making sure he's kind of centered in that circle. So our shaker front has a little scene on it and in the background it's going to have a shaker star that doesn't shake. <laughs> We're going to add adhesive behind our window and then I'm going to go ahead and take a piece of acetate. Um, we're just going to trim it down so it fits behind that window and then um, again I'm going to use my foam adhesive what I like to do is um, remove the release paper, that way I can go around the curve of the window. And I'm going to double up on the entire background. Um, I thought it would give my shaker some shake, but for some reason it's tough for me to get the shakers to shake. <laughs> Either I want them to shake or I don't, and if I do, they don't. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and fill in my background. You can see I went kind of liberally with this, um, but it was so pretty. I just love these. And you get tons in your kit. But um, I'm going to go use my craft pick and kind of spread out these little star pluses. And then once I'm happy, I'm going to carefully center my background panel right over the back and then adhere this to a standard A2 size card friend. And then our shaker that doesn't shake is ready to go. <laughs> so this is. Um, can see those crystals in the background look like crystals not real like sparkle although it is pretty much sparkly I'm gonna go ahead and adhere my black frame and this um, again is cut out with the, the handmade um, cardstock and it has dimension to it which is really nice and then that finishes off 
card number three. Actually, no, I take that back. I'm, I took, I decided this might, this was a mistake, guys. Um, if you wanted to go over your whale with your glossy accents or your journey glaze, it would be perfect. But I'm using my glow in the dark uh, lacquer pen, and I don't suggest this at all because um, I waited for this to dry um, to take my pictures. Um, and still shots are over my blog if you want to check it out. But when I took the pictures, this is dry. This is what it looks like. It cracks and it doesn't dry clear. So I don't suggest using this. I would suggest using glossy accents to shiny up your whale, okay? Um, this is great for adhering to your northern lights and then um, adhering your iridescent stars too, but not for your not for filling in areas guys don't don't use it for that but these are my three projects using the hero arts for my monthly hero kit for june 2020 thank you so much for joining me guys have a fabulous day and we will see you soon Bye bye